I say, would you like to be captain for a while? Me? The, the captain? Oh, yes, yes. I'm sure you'd be very good at it. You think I'd be good at it? I think you'd be marvellous. It's only polite that everyone should have a go at being the sky captain. Well, I've never done it before. Oh, I'm sure it would be fine. Yeah, all right, then. Very oh. good. You you be captain, and I'll, I'll just stand here. Celestia is a small box game of pushing your luck, but not just your luck, everybody's luck. You're in a luck nightclub and Lady Luck is DJing, but it's also a bit of a mosh pit and you can get your friends kicked out of the nightclub if you feel like they're pushing you too hard. You're making it sound gross, you're ruining everything again! Stop. It's not gross. Let me do it. Okay. I can't with the... Celestia is one of the prettiest games we've looked at in years with these lovely pastel shades and imaginative artwork and these classic looking player pawns. So which one of us is right? Uh, well, not you, but I think we can both agree that this 3D airship is completely awesome, as is the fact that the propeller spins. Yes! Here's how a game of Celestial works, and often how it doesn't work, which is equally fun. You all get plomped into a boat. Plomp. And the person at the back is the captain. You go on a fantastic cruise up through these beautiful floating islands with the hope of reaching the City of Lights. So you can buy one of those illustrious uh, ovaries in a box. Anyway, regardless how far you get, the further the better. Better treasures the further you go. But... First of all, it's the captain's job to see what's up ahead. And they have to roll a couple of dice, see what they're going to face on the journey, and then everyone sits and gets a little bit worried. You see, every player has a hand of cards, and most of these cards and this deck relates to the four different things that can come up on an adventure. See, I rolled, let's say, double clouds. Everyone then has to decide, if I'm captain, if they think I'm holding two pieces of equipment that can counter clouds. If they don't think I have that, they quietly get off the boat. If they do think I have it, they stay on board. And then if I have the cards, I must play them. The boat continues. The next player clockwise becomes captain and we go again. Everyone else decides to disembark or not. If I don't have those cards, it's a disaster. go off on another journey and everything's fine and nobody died probably the game's not entirely clear on that but then the important part is everyone draws one more card into their hand and anyone who disembarked gets one treasure from that particular location first player to 50 points is the winner and probably the least dead First of all, let's talk about the game's theme. What a champagne sodden success it is. You're all on a boat with a captain sailing to adventure through the sky. But who's the captain? Are you the captain? Hmm. Or are you the captain? And then disembarking. There's a fun bit of imagery. You get off the boat while other people go on, splits up the crew into two halves. Who trusts the captain to take them off to hot new lands? And who rather just get off here and, and then got what they've got so far without crashing into the ground in a disaster? But you discover these new islands, landing on these beautiful new places. Is it a kind of weird theatre or is it a place full of apples and frogs? And each of these new weird lands has fabulous treasures. Fabulous! What kind of treasures, Matt? Well, let's have a look at some of them. Man in a hat. Scottish chicken. The cat jar. Rocket chair. A golden ticket to Wonky Willy factory. Where? Wonky Willies. The one area where the art does fall down a bit is the characters, which all look like children who've taken different drugs. Even the ones with beards, weirdly. Faces are hard. It's great. But also, in terms of a pure push-your-luck game, Celestia is something of a success as well. You see, hidden in this deck are a few zoom cards to get you past any obstacle, but the captain doesn't have to play these unless they want to. And similarly, 
in some of the treasure decks, you'll find magical telescopes that get you past all the dice in a particular leg of the journey. Now, the captain's not going to want to play these for everybody, which means that as people start disembarking, and as more and more people think it would be crazy to stay on the ship, it makes more sense to stay on the ship because the captain will pull something out of their sleeves to just get you two further. But at the same time, you have to consider the fact that on the next leg of the journey, you'll be captain. And captains can't disembark unless they're the only people on a ship when it arrives. You see, it's possible to spend this breezy little journey just enjoying yourself, but similarly, mechanically minded passengers are going to have a great time staring at this ship's engine and figuring out how it works. It's all very delicate. It's all very even-handed. A game cruising gently with a steady hand on the tiller. There's theme, and the theme is very nice, but it's very light. Not too much of it. But there's also, you know, a, a game here, but not too much. Just a little, a little dusting, a little souffle of a game floating through the air. Souffles don't do that. If they did, they'd be more popular. But there's also some final stuff that you add into the game just to spice it up a bit. A bit of take that. Not a lot. Look at this. This is the game's deck of cards. And this is the, like, take that proportion. So there's only eight cards in a deck of however many. But these cards can do some very fun things. They can go, aha, I've got a jetpack, which means you guys are all going to crash and burn, but I'm just going to go and land there and have a fun time. You've got a kind of, uh, yeah, actually, I don't really want you on the boat, so I'm just going to just abandon you off the boat there. You're not coming with us anymore. And then you've got the ability to change the weather, change the fate of the journey. Oh, it's clear skies ahead, is it? Uh, not anymore, actually. I'm deciding that we're re-rolling those dice to make the skies a little bit busier. Or, oh gosh, that looks heavy up ahead. Let's just blow away all our problems and have a safe journey onwards. So that's Celestia. It's lovely, it's cheap, it's great fun, it's simple, and there's not a lot to it, but it's still an awful lot of fun. It's great, isn't it? Shut up and sit down. Absolutely recommends Celestia. But... You can't you... do a mid-review turnaround after you've done the recommendation thing. Why? You're not allowed us to this in the rules. Is it? Yeah, I'll get, I'll get, I'll get the book. Before you buy Celestia, do just check that it's not actually ink and gold that you want, aka Diamant, which is getting a whole great new edition later in the year. You see, that is just like Celestia, it's a push your luck game, but that actually goes up to eight players. It's got half the rules, it's twice as exciting, it doesn't have the lovely theme of Celestia, it also can't be played with two, but Celestia is not very good with two players anyway, so, you know, don't worry about it. Yeah, it says here, no, no mid-review turnarounds after the recommendation. Or what? Or you're fired. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm sure it doesn't say that. Are you know, it says you you're, sure? It says you're fired. Maybe it says I'm fired unless we, like, we get extravagant and we do like a recipe to, to go with Celestia, which is like... Something equally light and whimsical, like uh, uh, frittata with loads of courgette. Like a light vegetable frittata. Get extravagant. Yeah, no, yeah. Let's get extravagant with a uh, light vegetable frittata. Yeah, good catch. And you can't make a vegetable frittata without some vegetables. Some lovely red peppers that we're going to kind of shuffle about a bit and then chop in a nice routine fashion. Next up, de end a couple of big courgettes and then roughly grate them. Oh, don't think that. Oh, I'm, I'm so disappointed in you. I really am. Next up on the list of essentials, a crushed and very finely sliced clove of garlic. Whack that in the bowl. And now we're into the bonus round of veg. I'm gonna whack in some chopped up green beans because I've got them. You can pretty much put whatever you want in at this point. Whatever you've got, just make sure you cut it up into the right size of pieces so that it'll cook evenly with the other stuff. And like magic, it's already in a pan with about two tablespoons of, of olive oil because you forgot to film that bit. Put this on a low to medium heat for probably about 15, 20 minutes. The important thing here is you want to cook most of the liquid out of the veg, especially the courgette, because they are wet, wet gentlemen. If it starts to fry at all or brown, that's too hot. But if it's turning a bit wet and sludgy, probably not hot enough. That's going to take a little while to cook off, so let's do something else. Eggs. 
you literally can't make a frittata without destroying a few eggs. I'm destroying about six eggs, I think, maybe seven. Depends how I'm feeling. Add a little salt and pepper and then whisk. But hold on, soldier, it's time for some tricky pan business. Right, I'm using a cast iron skillet here, and the thing about them is you need to put them on a very low heat for about six, seven, eight minutes, and then they'll be ready to use. If you're using a cast iron skillet, then put this on the heat while you're cooking the veg down. But if you're not, if you're just using a nonstick pan, you don't need to do that. You can just put it on the heat about a minute or two before you're ready to go. Good, panic over. At the point at which the mixture is starting to catch on the bottom of the pan and just get a little bit stuck, it means there's not much liquid there. Well done, you're done. Turn off the heat. And now just before we add this in with the eggs, I want to get some mint leaves and chop them up finely, add them to the eggs, and then add the whole mixture straight from the pan into the eggs. Cool tip, this mixture is hot, which means it will already start to warm up the eggs, making them cook a little bit quicker in the pan. Hey presto, you're a bloody magician. And on the topic of magic, whack in some cubes of feta cheese, because oh, lovely, lovely, lovely. Or don't stir it around with your hand, Matt. Don't stir it around with your hand. Oh, stop it. Now your skillet's all nice and hot, you want to very carefully coat it all with oil just so it doesn't get stuck at all, just a little bit of oil all over it. Don't do what I'm doing here, you'll just burn your hands with oil, preferably just use a bit of kitchen paper or towel or whatever you call it in your country. And finally begin the very sombre, slow procession towards the pan with the eggy eggy mixture. And then pour it in! Fantastic! The initial heat of the pan should seal the very edges of the egg, but apart from that, nothing will happen. You leave it on the lowest heat possible, and then just wander off for about 15 to 20 minutes. When you come back and find that about the outer two inches have cooked pretty much, but the center's still wobbly, just put it underneath the grill, or the broiler, as you're in America, broiler, for, for about five, five minutes or so, until the top is nice and browned and completely solid. You don't want any wobble here. And if you didn't properly cook all of the liquid out of the courgettes earlier, then yes, you are going to be stuck right slap bang center in the wobble slop zone. But fingers crossed you haven't fluffed it up and you can pretty much get the omelette thing out of the pan without too much hassle. Look, hardly any of it got stuck to the pan. That's a success. I'm chalking it up a win. This beautifully light and whimsical frittata is best served under a bivouac of dressed salad. To make it a bit feisty, I'd also recommend finely slicing a red chilli and just putting some raw red chilli on top. And then finally, potatoes. Potatoes. Fried potatoes. More potatoes. Please more. More potatoes. I know you've got more. There's more. I know there's more. Potatoes. Thank you. And that's it. Gosh, you've made a right meal of it. And there you have it. You can eat now. You can eat now. You can. It's... it's... I mean, I like the candle. No, that's the candle romance. It's just for me and my lover. Thank you for watching. Thank you again. We'll see you next time. Goodbye.